Even though most defensive shotguns have a relatively low ammo capacity, it's almost unheard of for an armed citizen to empty a shotgun before stopping a home invasion. That said, it's always possible that we might need more ammo than what's already in the shotgun in order to protect our home and our family. When we're practicing at the range, we're gonna need to load and reload the shotgun anyway, so we might as well practice a reloading technique that would be viable under fighting conditions. There are literally dozens of different techniques for reloading a shotgun, but in a home defense context, we're probably not gonna be able to rely on any kind of pouches or a chest rig or anything that we would use in a competition. We're gonna be limited to the ammo that is on the gun, and typically that means a stock-mounted shell carrier or a side saddle like this one. The side saddles are more popular, and that's what I use, so today I'm gonna to demonstrate two different reloading techniques with the side saddle. I'll be using the Remington 870, but these reloads should work with any modern pump action shotgun and they can easily be adapted for most semi-automatics as well. These aren't necessarily the quickest reloading techniques, but they are pretty reliable and they require as little conscious thought and manual dexterity as possible. Shotgun ammo is big and clumsy to deal with. There's lots of ways to mess up these reloads and fumble this ammo, so I like to use simple techniques whenever possible. When we're training with shotguns, we don't want to wait until the gun is empty to think about managing ammo. When we're not shooting, we should be proactively reloading. If we fire two rounds at a target during a drill, we reload two rounds. If we fire three, we load three. So both of these techniques include topping off the gun and loading an empty gun. For this first technique, we're gonna start with the primers or the brass part of the shells oriented at the bottom of the side saddle. From the firing position, I'm gonna bring the gun down so the stock is kinda of under my arm like this. You can reload with the stock still mounted to your shoulder, but then you're supporting the whole weight of the gun with just your wrist. It gets tiring really quickly and you don't have a whole lot of leverage on the gun if someone were to try and grab it and take it away from you. So down here, I've lowered the overall profile of the shotgun and I've also got more leverage on it so I can hang on to it a little better. So from down here, to load the magazine tube, I'm gonna push a shell out with my thumb and into my hand, then bring it up to the loading port and then use my thumb to push it into the magazine tube. I wanna make sure I get it in there past the shell stops so the spring doesn't uh, just spit the shell back out. So that means I've gotta get my thumb partially into the magazine tube and then quickly pull it away. If I have fired the gun until it's empty, then I've gotta load the chamber before I can load the magazine tube. So with a pump action, I might not know that I'm empty until I get a click. So no bang, open the action, grab the first shell, and instead of going to the magazine tube, I'm gonna bring the shell all the way around and straight into the ejection port. Now I can do this without even looking at the gun. I just put the shell on the receiver and sort of roll it up until it goes into the ejection port. And from here, I close the action. I can come back up on the target and fire, or I can stay down here and continue loading the shotgun. This other technique I wanna show you is uh, one that I recently learned from Daryl Bulky in his shotgun class a couple of months ago. I'm gonna start with the brass up in the side saddle this time. And the reason you might wanna have the brass up is to prevent the shells from falling out of the loops. If you have the brass down, when you fire the gun, the vibration can kind of shake the shells loose until they fall out of the gun completely. This is especially an issue with the hard plastic side saddles. I haven't had that problem with the elastic side saddles, but it can happen with those eventually because the elastic will wear out. So if that's something that you're concerned about, the brass up position keeps them from falling out. So from here, if I just pluck the shell out, which would kind of seem to be the obvious thing to do. It's not really oriented in my hand in a way to feed it into the mag tube without sort of flipping it like that. And there's a good chance I will drop it when I do that. So instead, I'm going to blade my hand like this and point it toward me. Now I can use my thumb to push up the shell into my hand and right into the magazine tube, kind of like I did with the other technique. And here's Daryl demonstrating the technique from the other side of the gun. If I've got an empty gun and I need to load the chamber from here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Bring my hand in, push the shell up, come under the receiver, and then just like I did before, right into the ejection port. When you've got the shells and the side saddle brass up, it's 
probably quicker to just pluck one out, and rotate the gun around and let gravity work for you and just sort of drop the shell in there and close it like that. That can work really well, but it requires you to grab the shell in a different way than when you're loading the magazine tube. And like I said before, I wanna have as little thinking involved as possible, so I prefer to go under the receiver so I can grab the shell the same way no matter where I need to put it, even if it costs me a couple of tenths of a second. Some people like to mix it up and have brass down for some shells for loading the tube and then keep a couple in there brass up for loading the chamber. Again, this can be really quick and I've seen it work really well for some people, uh, but like Daryl pointed out in his class, when his attention is focused on a potential threat, he doesn't wanna have to think about which way the shells are turned and I'm inclined to agree with him on that. If I have reached the point where I have to emergency reload my shotgun in my home, Something has gone horribly wrong. I want the most idiot proof technique possible, and I think these two techniques fit that description pretty well. Now, having said that, there are a lot of variations on the shotgun reload that can also work really well if you practice them enough to make them second nature.